Hello everybody, nice to be here, see you in real life. I'm Chris Anderson, co-founder of two space companies, Penguin AI and Spicy. Uh, I will talk a little bit about remote sensing. And if someone could put up my view graphs, please. Oh. One more, thanks. There we are, that's me. What you see in behind me here is a satellite. It's a, called Sentinel-2, and it's part of the Copernicus uh, constellation. And that's a huge investment by EU and ESA. And uh, you will see a little bit more of that satellite. Remote sensing, you can also call it Earth observation, or you could call it monitoring, or satellite-based surveillance. And then we end up in what I usually say is the first misconception of remote sensing. Is this something for great powers? Is it mainly space satellites? And maybe you have seen The Animal of the State, really good film, by the way, uh, but you get a little bit scared when it comes to remote sensing and the satellite monitoring. Uh, and maybe also you have seen Will Smith looking up and taking care of, of the satellites and all that. Is this really a, a good view of remote sensing? I wouldn't say so. But I can present for you a really unique image uh, when it comes to the military part of, of, of the remote sensing. And uh, Donald Trump had a brief uh, one day uh, regarding the failure of the Iranian launch. And he picked up his uh, iPhone, took a picture of it and tweeted that image. That is, you see now deeply into the most secret stuff in the US when it comes to satellite and remote sensing. Maybe that's not the, the important part here, the tweet and so on, but more, what is it that they are briefing? It's you, it's, I mean, it's strategic level. They're looking at countries, they're looking at animals, uh, and it's more of that part that the military part of the, of the remote sensing talking about. Uh, I mean, it's too expensive to, to check what Will, Will Smith are doing. So what it's actually is about is free information, transparency, look at your enemies, and instead of guessing what they are doing, you really know what they are doing. So in a kind, it's a, in a, uh, it, it's a part of keeping the peace. Maybe you're not <clears throat> agree to me, but then the other misconception. Remote sensing is expensive, it's difficult, it's complicated. And when you see uh, views from the satellite launches, you see hundreds of guys sitting in front of hundreds of PCs uh, and taking care of all that stuff. Also here you have Hollywood uh, adding to this uh, concept of high technology, complicated stuff, but Star Wars. And, sorry. And if you add the, the crazy scientists also that really needs to take care of this data, you, you are complete in a misconception when it comes to uh, remote sensing. But what is it in real reality? I would like, this is much more good image of remote sensing today. What you have today is a multinational, multi-billion infrastructure paid by a lot of government and giving you a lot of information free and access. So the correct image I would say is this guy from Bangladesh sitting and downloading the information and do his homework by information from, from the remote sensing infrastructure. Why is it this change from governmental governmental oriented remote sensing to free information to all in a democratic way. I would say the fundamental changes today is that is uh, three drivers. You of course have to the right there, the technology, but you also have new actors. 
new business ideas, new business models, a new idea how to deal with this, perhaps in a smarter and a better way than the government are doing it. Added to that, you have an influx of money that from a capital that realized that there is a billion dollar industry in this and you will have a return of investment. If we move to the left part of it, you also see part of the technology uh, changes that have been done during the last 10 years. Space is standing on two uh, blocks that support the space arena. The first one is digitalization. The data is digital and that means that you will have an exponential growth. That's always happening when you digitize the information. The next one is big data. Remote sensing are pouring down petabyte of information to the ground. And if you have a lot of information, a lot of data, you can use that as a new, as a natural resource. So in a way, the information from remote sensing is the new oil and feeding the, the, the business. If you add on top of this, the AI, machine learning, you can handle these, all these data in a clever way, you can handle them in a scalable way, and you can create a business that is feasible. And you have what we call new space and the driver for this business. If you see what's happening really on the satellite arena now, you see in the, in the bottom gra <coughs> graph there, you have the size and the mass of the satellites are decreasing due to the technology de development. And if the satellite is decreasing in size and, and mass, they will be cheaper and more efficient to launch. And the upper graph show you the number of Earth observation satellites that are launched now. And you see an increase in the number of satellites. So this means new sensors, new capacity and new players in, in space. And finally, you, this is also seen when it comes to the commercial data. The data cost is decreasing more and more on top of the governmental free information. You know how now how have easy, accessible and rather cheap information from the commercial satellites. And you can see the result. This is uh, data from the planet, American company planet, and you can easily see the difference between the pre-COVID uh, traffic in Rome and during the shutdown in Rome. So, how are we going to use this? We have an infrastructure there, global infrastructure, free information, and you can use this in, in many different ways. On the governmental level, <clears throat> it gives you a unique decision-making capacity. You have the global access and you have a access in time, over time. And the first example I show here is the, is the declining of the, uh, of the polar ice. That can be followed in detail. And at the same time, you can pinpoint various, ex, uh, various events that is happening. Uh, what I show there is a crisis, a refugee crisis in Chad 2008, when the rebels invaded the, uh, invaded the Nunyema city. And you really can pinpoint each people on that image and take the decision, what is needed here? Do we need evacuate people or what can we do? Um, so it's, it's a new way to handling global consequences for a government. And that's covered all the various, um, various ministers. It's not just research and education ministers that's need of this. You can go further down <clears throat> to regional governmental agencies. Uh, normally in the Western countries, the, the, the 
the community is very well planned, it's working fine, you have maps and all that stuff, except when something happened. During the crisis, all this falling down. And we've seen it time from time. Uh, the forest fire in Sweden, the flooding in Germany, and this show you what's happened during uh, in New Orleans during a hurricane. Uh, what you see here is night image, so it's electric light in the New, New Orleans, and this is the result after a hurricane. You can pinpoint areas where you have no electricity, and you can plan this. The next step, companies that it doesn't need to be space companies. Uh, they, uh, I mean, the, the business today is driving faster and faster. You need more and more information, and you need it fast, and it, you need it correctly. So it's a tool for business information monitoring. Normally, you have that information from news, from social media, from reports, and so on. But with satellite data and remote sensing, you can dig, dig deeper down into icebergs, so to say, and look at things that you can't detect by any other uh, sources. To the right, I have a lithium mine, and I guess that our battery companies in Sweden and Northvolt would be really interesting to see what these type of mines are doing, if there are a stop or so for the supplier or something. The next level, NGOs, journalists, activists, also will be able to use this data, especially since they are free. And they have a need to go into inaccessible areas on a global level and pinpoint events, pinpoint atrocities, for instance. What I show here is a small village in Burma or Myanmar, and this is from, from January 2017. Nine months later, you have this image from exactly the same area, and what you see here is burnt down areas. So the whole Islamic community was uh, moved away from or killed from this area. And you can pinpoint it in detail what is happening, even though you don't have access to that area. And finally, on a personal level, you also can use this, you yourself. Uh, I don't know if there are any forest owner here. Raise your hand. Should be, yeah, a few of them, at least. We are 300,000 in Sweden. Uh, and uh, as a forest owner, you are interested in what is happening on your, on your forest. Uh, how do the uh, subcontractor handling it? What do your neighbor do? And in this case, you can use Copernicus data to have a much higher frequency of the information. And for my case, I wanted to check the subcontractor. Are they really planting the, the plants that I want there? And I want to check my neighbors when it comes to the clear cuts. And it's easy to do that. Just go into the whatever dozens of, uh, of hubs and download your data, add it on Google Earth. So is it remote sensing something for you? Uh, I would say so. It's something that whatever you would like to do when it comes to the terrain, see what changes, it's something that you can add to your information. You need a PC, you need the internet, and you need a good coffee. If you have a problem to solve, the better. And then go down in the information. Use Google, use whatever information you have there. And as the last line, I. I added start your space company. Uh, there is a chance to do a lot within this area and change the world. Thank you. <laughs>